Hello and welcome to Friends of the Show. I am your host, Stephen William Skinner, and this is my podcast where I have a chat with a friend. Uh, they share a story, some funny tweets, and answer questions asked by listeners just like you. Submitted via Twitter, so be sure to follow at FOTS Pod and submit a question to be read on a future show. So this week's friend of the show is the very funny and talented Mike Bigby at Mike Bigby on Twitter. Uh, we just have a real fun and wacky time in this one. Um, I think think you're going to enjoy it um and be sure to stay tuned after the interview for a bonus music performance from mike um so without further ado friends of the show episode number seven with mike bigby the degree of one's emotions varies inversely with one's knowledge of the facts dog the bounty hunter And welcome to Friends of the Show podcast, the podcast where I talk to some friends on the show. So Dog the Bounty Hunter, that's our first Dog the Bounty Hunter quote, uh, and it was provided to us by our guest this week, who is the lovely English gentleman named Mike Bigby. Welcome to the show, Mike. Hi, Steve. Thanks for having me. It's great to be here. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. Um, now, I haven't known you too, too long. I think uh, maybe several months, I think, on- online we've been buddies. Um, but yeah. I don't know. So we don't know you as well as some of the other guests, but that's the great thing. We get to know you today on the show and everyone can hear all the great stories that you have. Uh, exactly. It's perfect. Uh, if you notice me slipping into English accent here and there, I do apologize. <laughs> it's just a <laughs> awful tick that I developed <laughs> when I was living there. Uh, and, uh, it continues to this day. Um, yeah. Welcome Mike. And maybe tell the listeners a little someone about yourself. Get us uh, acquainted with you. Um, okay, yeah. So I'm uh, I'm a very talented uh, and handsome young boy. Um, I have strong muscles, and uh, everybody loves me. That is so. a great description. I would say apt, from what I know, from the information that I've gathered. That is all. <laughs> it all falls into place. It's true, ladies and gentlemen. He's the best. <laughs> he's got a beard. Uh, yeah, tall, handsome, striking in appearance. <laughs> um, nice. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and hilariously Stru- funny, obviously, from that bio description. Well, I think that basically gets us caught up to today. So, <laughs> um, the story that you are about to regale us with uh, mm-hmm. is entitled "The Eagles of Death Metal." That's right. It's like you, the band. Do you know the band? Yeah, it's the the band. They were unfortunately involved in the Paris attacks. Yeah, my story links into that event. Uh, oh, this is gonna get juicy, folks. <laughs> well, wait till you hear it. Okay. So, do you want me to, like, let's do this. Okay. Um, so, uh, a cut, like, about uh, two years ago, a, a friend of mine sent me some, a friend I was trying to impress, like a new friend, sent me some Eagles of Death Metal songs. I was like, this is my favorite band. And I listened to them, and I thought they were absolutely diabolically terrible. <laughs> uh, but I kept listening to them, and as you do with music, you hear it a few times, you get into it. Um, and I became a big fan fairly quickly. And then they were, uh, yeah, they were doing a tour of the of Europe, um, which I was very excited about. And um, my friend went to see them in Southampton, which is in the south of uh, England. And I was extremely jealous that she uh, got tickets. So I went, I got, I got tickets as well, but for a the, the, like the next week. And yeah, like when it came, hers was like three days before my gig her gig was yeah and those days. those southampton gigs those are like legendary where were you gonna see them <laughs> birmingham oh no whooped yeah too bad oh well so sorry continue Lame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um and yeah so she went to see him and she got pulled up on stage and what? i was like yeah she got pointed at by the lead singer jesse hughes while she was dancing and she got pulled up on stage and she posted a video on Facebook of, uh, of her wow. on stage with the band. Courtney Cox, Bruce Springsteen style, pulled up on yeah. stage, jean shorts, imaginably, <laughs> maybe. Uh, yeah. That's awesome. So Dogs. obviously gutted not to be there, right, for that. That would have been cool. Well, I, yeah, and I had to, I just absolutely had to outdo her in there. So I went there with my friend Andy and... 
um, we watched the show, and I was right at the front, and I kept shouting that I'd buy him a beer, uh, the lead singer, if he, if he brought me up on stage, and he didn't do it. Uh, although it was a great, great gig, uh, admittedly, I was a little disappointed, and I felt like I couldn't go home without a story to tell, so I went around the back of the uh, of the venue at the end, okay, where yeah, yeah. I, quite a large number of people had come to watch the uh, the band come out and get into their um, you know their touring bus, um, and it was fenced off. Uh, we went and added, and it was, you know, um, there was a security guard there. But I noticed that there was like a, a string of roadies that were going from the the fenced off area to just out where near where we were by the bands, so like a roadies car or something like that. Um, so I just walked around to the roadies car, picked something up, and walked it into the um, <laughs> into, yeah. the, All right. into the fenced off area. And the security move. guard let me in. Nice, a little like, yeah, I'm with the band. Exactly, yeah, and and uh, I was absolutely shitting my pants at this point because um, <laughs> I was like, now what? Do I, okay, this is all well and good, but now what do I do? <laughs> so it's around the corner on my own because my, obviously my friend hadn't done it as well. So I was just um, waiting there, and at the time I smoked, so I just um, I rolled a cigarette and and um, and just to try to calm my nerves. When uh, three seconds later, my buddy walked around the corner carrying something as well. He'd obviously seen what I'd done and. and um, <laughs> And copied it, and then uh, yeah, we kind of egged each other on. We went up into the um, into the changing rooms, and we walked into a a gratuitous uh, adult environment. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? Like yeah. PG thirteen? Are we talking? What are we I mean, talking here? I think we're we're talking like R, R rated. We're talking, we're talking like, NC seventeen. We're talking like X videos. <laughs> oh yeah, that's NC seventeen. That's X <laughs> when they used to have it. X rated. So yeah, um, I walked in on Jesse Hughes banging some girl. My <laughs> um, Which was uh, obviously we were like in trouble with the manager, but we were, it's not real trouble. We're not going to do anything. But the get it was out nice of here, you. To, like while we were um, getting told off by the manager, he was nice enough to come out and take a picture with us. So I got a picture with, with Jesse yeah. Hughes <laughs> and. And yeah, then we and then we and then we just left. And then a, a week later, um, we went to Paris, and and uh, and that happened. <laughs> oh my um, god, that was right before. Wow. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was literally one week it was before the um, same exactly. tour. A week before, that is nuts. Mm. And and actually, I, I suppose the, um, the 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 important detail that I've left out, the the funny detail, is that I felt like I'd. Uh, trumped this friend of mine by doing that i think so yeah i mean getting called on stage is good but <laughs> yeah I, I spoke to her on, on on facebook and i was like yeah uh, jesse hughes gave me a picture so hmm, how do you feel about that she's like uh yeah um he gave me chlamydia <laughs> uh. <laughs> so, uh, well, your friend was the person <laughs> that you walked in on of that week's show <laughs> yeah exactly yeah um yeah good for her i mean <laughs> yeah kind of i'm glad well i mean for her it's better because probably no one walked in like carrying something pretending to be with the band true, 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 right true. so there was still that element of privacy but then again chlamydia that's i mean that sticks with you but if there was a version of her at my gig maybe there was a version of me at her gig Oh, for sure. The guy who didn't get called up on stage tried to bribe him with beer. As happens, like, yeah, oh, you can't get a free beer. Sure, the lead singer of the band at the rock venue, yeah, uh, <laughs> might have his own uh, source of alcohol on the on premises. But yeah, I mean, it's you know, it was worth a shot for sure. Yeah, that's a good point. Actually, that never really occurred to me that maybe maybe the singer of the band probably gets free beers. Three uh, other things, it sounds like, too. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, that's, that's the uh, that's So it. that's, that's the, story. the story about Eagles of Death Metal. So you're still a fan, obviously. Yeah, yeah. Although they got a bit weird uh, after that yeah. uh, event. Understandably so. I know totally understandably, yeah. But they sure. got a bit, like, a little bit racist every so often. And I was like, oh... oh. Is it Islamophobia? Yeah, a touch. Which you can, I mean, you can understand, but yeah, at the I same mean, time... Yeah, I wouldn't want to put bit. myself in their shoes, right? You know? That was actually a very great story. It took a lot of twists and turns, like the setup with the friend going, the show getting called up, that was great, and made it all the way through to the climactic finish, uh, as it were, <laughs> and we <laughs> emerged out the other side 
uh, safe and still a fan of the band, even though they got a bit weird. Yeah, I, I would say I'm, I'm more of an arm's distance fan of the band now, but to put like to clarify. Right. Yeah. Not going to not going to hit up the next tour, but maybe. No. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not a fan of like sweeping generalizations about, uh, you know, religions yeah. or like giving people chlamydia or <laughs> yeah that is true that's two strikes so i guess yeah arms distance fan sounds about right for that for this situation well thank you Absolutely. for sharing that with us and, You're uh, and so now we move on to the next part which is your tweets so I have asked you to submit to us uh, three tweets of your own writing mm. that uh, we will now read and discuss. So the first one is a really good one, and it is goofy as an art critic. Gosh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't do a very great. I don't do a very good goofy. Go- gosh, uh, that was great. That's perfect. That's perfect. So, uh, tell us a little bit about that. It's really funny. How did you put that together? <laughs> um, I, I don't know. Nothing. Um, I think I said the word gauche uh, in conversation. And I was like, Jesus, I can't believe I just said that. So pretentious. <laughs> oh, you said gauche, not like gauche, like what Goofy says. <laughs> you yeah. were like, oh, I was surprised by something. And were like, gauche. <laughs> No, I was I was I was legitimately criticizing something that I felt was uh, was uh, I don't know what's the what, how do you this gosh uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, well, yeah um, I don't know and, the definition the dictionary definition like not not proper yeah I suppose gaudy or like yeah tawdry. okay right yeah gaudy is somewhere between that so what was the thing do you remember I was like I just felt like I sounded like goofy when I said that was it. That's all that happened. What, okay, well, what was the real thing you were criticizing in real life? Um, I think it was Beauty and the Beast, uh, the, the remake. The remake of Beauty and the Beast. Well, there yeah. you go. See you later, Disney sponsors. <laughs> Bitch. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's uh, great. That. Yeah, and that was a recent one. That's from this year, 2017. So keeping them fresh. Yeah. Oh yeah, I'm sorry if that um, cost you any of that uh, of that good good Disney dollar. Yeah, I was I was gonna be tapped to write the next uh, Star Wars spinoff, but <laughs> now I don't know. So, okay, so the next tweet that we got here is by Mike Bigby, and it goes like this: When accompanying a lady, the gentleman walks on the roadside of the pavement, so if a car swerves off road. He can bat it away with his dick. <laughs> I thought I probably should have got you to read that one because I definitely hear it in an English accent. <laughs> but I can't, I can't hear the bat it away with his dick in an English accent, though. Can you can you say that part? Um, I would. You know what? I would probably say an American accent. I like this is a funny uh, like a funny fact about I think millennial English people is that they're. I, I repeatedly get criticized for speaking in an American accent by accident. Oh, really? <laughs> we're so ex- so overexposed to American culture on the, like, the TV and the radio oh, and all that kind of stuff. Bat, bat it, hang on. <clears throat> bat it away with his dick. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even do it. You know what I mean? Try it again. It kind of sounded like uh, John Malkovich, I think. <laughs> <laughs> bat it away with his dick. Yeah, that's, bit, that's good. <laughs> your, your English accent is better than mine, I think. Well, I speak the Canadian dialect, which is slightly different. Mm, more French. Un petit peu français, mais je bon. Because we all exactly, mon ami. Le chat à la poubelle. Yeah, we're gonna have to bleep. We're gonna have to bleep that one. <laughs> <laughs> Pardon our French. Uh, so, uh, how did you think about batting a car away with the, your dick? Um, again, this, I mean, the stories of coming up with tweets are probably aren't that, especially when it comes to me, probably aren't that uh, entertaining. But, oh, that's okay. So uh, you just like think of it and then boom. Or like, because sometimes well, these are uh, real life events, right? So I don't know if you like saw someone yeah. do this and then you're like, <laughs> I did. Yeah, I, I, I saw, um, well, my dad used to do it when, when I was growing <laughs> up with my mom, like, uh, like make her, like move her to the inside of the pavement away from the roadside oh that sidewalk. is the gentleman move you're right yes yeah and I, and I and i happened to see someone do it in the street and i and i you know in the spirit of equality and like 
uh, you know, the, the 21st century, I, I was thinking to myself, why the fuck did he do that? Because if a car <laughs> did work off road, what could he do to stop it? Like, he could, he, he's dead, just like she's dead. No, the I don't know. Can... I think it kind of, he'll take the brunt of the impact and protect her, and her body will fly out of the way to safety. Yeah, exactly. I mean, he's so, he, he's, he, in his own mind, he's so beefy that he could literally, he, he could be hit by a car, take the brunt of it, and stop it before it crushes her. Or, like, at the last second, he could push her out of the way because, like, he sees it hitting him first. You know, All right. I, we need Perfect to, holes, we need to run some tests. We need to hit some people with cars. <laughs> oh, dear. Why don't I even come on this show? Poking holes in my jokes, you bastard. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll get to this next one. Uh, did you want to read it or did you want I, me to read it? Cause it no, I would, I would much prefer you to read it. All right. Uh, the third tweet of Mike Bigby's, it goes like this. Want to feel old? I do. It's been 500 years since I supped from Vladimir's grail. My loved ones have all perished. Hey Arnold is like 30 now. <laughs> hey Arnold. Great ref. So you got Hey Arnold in England? Oh yeah. Big time. <laughs> Big time Hey yeah. Arnold fan in uh, the UK. We're all, we call ourselves uh, football heads because we're all like mad about Hey Arnold. Oh, that's what it is. I thought it was the soccer. Uh, oh, well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's... Hey it's both. <laughs> yeah, we named soccer after um, football head, Hey Arnold. Oh, that makes sense. I never <laughs> I never got into it, so you must be maybe a slight uh, few years younger than me, because I think it was yeah. uh, after my time. Well, how, how old are you, if you don't mind me asking? Uh, 30-something. L- mid oh. low mid 30s yeah yeah i I'm, well i'm in my um early 500s as per that tweet <laughs> right <laughs> so um, the yeah the but, low 500s that's the those are the golden years yeah exactly yeah nowhere near 600 yet best days ahead of you still <laughs> <laughs> that one i i don't know i don't know how i came up with that i think it was just that um you're watching hey arnold <laughs> yeah well, when am I not watching Hey Arnold? I mean, honestly. <laughs> um, I don't know. I think I, I just saw one of those BuzzFeed articles where it's like, want to feel old? And it's right. like, uh, you know, who who would want to feel old? Yeah, um, I never got that either. Someone who's eternally young, maybe, and is sick of being young. And that's kind of where it came from, I guess. Yeah, great take, I think. I, I like that one. It was good. From back in the heady days of October 2016. Oh, the wonder years of my youth. We all long for those days, especially you, having not (laughs) supped from Vladimir's Grail in so long. (laughs) Oh, I don't know what the uh, the, what the etiquette is when you hear someone read your own joke. Should you laugh or should you just be silent? Yeah, I think be silent. That's like the cool move. I think laugh if you still if it still makes you laugh. I wouldn't hide it. That's that's the real move. Uh, but yeah, <laughs> silent, a respectful silence, I think, is appropriate. It is kind okay. of odd with uh, reading tweets, right? Because they're meant to be read, not meant to be heard, spoken. Yeah, especially the ones that are like little sketches when they've got like stage directions and stuff like that, where it's like very difficult to I've, read Yeah, I've been reading the stage direction tweets uh, in a few episodes on the show, and it is kind of tough. But, you know, <laughs> some of the tweets are just so funny that it works. But some of them you really have to... We'll see how it works. I think you have one here <laughs> that is like has some stage direction. So we'll I'm, see I'm, how that goes. I'm looking at it right now and I'm thinking, how am I going to deliver this? I'm assuming that you you would prefer me to read the ones that I've sent to you, or I don't know if you've got. Um. Yeah. Or yeah. Well, I'll have you read uh, that one specifically because I only picked I picked three. You sent about a hundred, so I had to cut <laughs> some out because we do only three just to keep it fair, keep the you know continuity of the show. <laughs> so apologies to Kyle McDowell, I am Space Girl Sky, Abby Cohen, JB Johnson, Ollie Monster, <laughs> Know the Other John, and. Stephen W. Skinner, your tweets will not be read on the show today, but still follow these people online because they're very funny. And thank you, Mike, for submitting so many tweets, a plethora of tweets. And uh, I had to choose from those choices. So now I know it's it's hard to choose. There's a lot of funny people out there, so many funny tweets. And I'm sorry to make our guests choose, but that's the live and die rules of the the podcast. (laughs) So I take it by... um... 
the process of elimination. Uh, yeah, process of elimination. Thank you. I was, that's what I was trying to think of. Process of elimination. The Radtoria is one that I can. Radtoria has made the cut. Pal of the show, Ghost Mom. Radtoria. This is one of the first tweets that um, made me laugh out loud for like real, for like cry- crying with laughter. Because <laughs> um, you know, normally when you're on your own and you're reading funny stuff, your brain just goes, "That's funny." Yes. But you don't actually <laughs> laugh. This this one made me cry. So here we go. <clears throat> People who are offended when I breastfeed in public need to shut the fuck up. What I'm doing is natural and strengthens the bond between me and my dog. <laughs> nice. That was your uh, Radtoria accent, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm assuming that she's uh, a, a, a 20-something British male. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty good. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this is a classic tweet. And holy cripes, it's got about 25,000 retweets. Would you believe it? It's a, it's a, it deserves every single one. It's amazing, that tweet. I love it. It's a great tweet. Um, who is next? Next, we have friend or enemy of the show, Tom at Trojan Sauce, <laughs> who has been <laughs> mentioned before. Another British dude. Yeah, this is another one that I really like, although uh, Tom and I are... Um, we have a bit of a love-hate relationship, let's put it that way. That's what I was trying uh, to get at. He's not an enemy of the show. He's a very much a friend of the show. But in you have a little bit of a thing going on. Yeah, it's a lot of sexual tension, <laughs> uh, a lot of unresolved um, drama. And, you know, it's just one of those things. Eventually, we'll get together and we'll thrash it out. But in the meantime, here's the tweet. Um, stage direction, phone sex, her. Tell me what you do with me. Me. Loudly chewing a bagel. I don't know, probably sex. <laughs> so classic Tom just <laughs> is so indifferent. I, I naturally said probably then, but I should stress that a lot of the comedy comes from the fact that it says probably sex. And it also probably. doesn't say I don't know. It says I D K. Yeah. Yeah, but how do you say that? Did you it- don't. You have the way you read it was correct. But the okay, way good. it is to be read is IDK, probably sex. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's indifferent, he's chewing a bagel, couldn't care less, but he's somehow doing phone sex. Tom, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because um, when I have had phone sex with him, he's been far more um, engaged <laughs> than that. Yeah, he's, more atten- he's an attentive uh, phone sex lover. Yeah, exactly. This is just the persona. <laughs> um, this is the Tom persona of Twitter, right? So, you know, we'll talk about that. He's he's not his persona. He's different. And he's uh, he's good on the phone, right? <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. He'll keep, he'll keep, you, uh, keep you engaged, for sure. Shout out to Tom. Ways. And I hope to have him on to rekindle your rivalry on a future episode. I'm, sh- I'm sure he would love that. In fact, I think he's annoyed that I'm on before him. Uh oh, <laughs> we'll talk about it. That's a tease for a future episode. <laughs> uh, sorry, did, did I just? Uh, no, it's perfect. I, just, uh, I love it. If you're listening to this one, um, so, be sure to listen to a future episode with Trojan Sauce. I will. Um, so the last tweet is from Steve, legendary comedian and writer. Rest in peace, Harris Whittles. Harris Whittles is um, my all-time favorite comedian, who I would uh, gladly. Um, kiss on the mouth, even now. Wow. Uh, So here's a tweet. At the risk of stereotyping, I feel like all gay people are just attracted to people of their own gender. (laughs) It's a classic Whittlesism. And yeah, I also myself count myself as a huge uh, Harris Whittles fan before he even was writing on Parks and Rec or whatever. I loved uh, all of his podcast appearances and uh, just one of the best, unfortunately, taken too soon. Back in the days of Foam Corner. Yeah, Foam Corner was <laughs> one of the funniest things. And uh, that's what led me to uh, start following him on Twitter. And just, yeah, his like stream of consciousness. He'll just like tweet anything, super absurd stuff. Rest in peace. Yeah, we miss him. It, it was, I was incredibly sad when, he, when I found out that he had passed away. And it really affected me, even though, you know, I never met him. Um, interacted with him on Twitter uh, a couple of times. But the, uh, yeah, just the, it's weird. Someone you have never met just uh, has an effect on you, you know? Well, yeah, I think it's I think it's something to do with podcasts because they're so um, intimate in, like, a way that radio isn't and maybe TV isn't because it's, uh, it's like, you know, directly into your ear. 
and you feel it, and especially with a guy like that who's been on so many podcasts, so you get to know his personality so well. And he was a very honest guy as well. That yeah, I think that's do- what it was. I think that's what, you're, what it was because we've listened to so many of his like feels like conversations with, with friends that you kind of feel like, yeah, you would know him, be able to hang out with him. <laughs> kind of, uh, yeah, it was just really sad that uh, that happened. Oh, really bringing bring- the podcast <laughs> down, <laughs> really brought the podcast to a low point. But uh, <laughs> everyone should ch- uh, go check out Harris Whittle's old jokes and watch old episodes of Parks and Rec. Uh, he was, had a bit part as, I think, one of the animal control guys. <laughs> yeah. And definitely go back and listen to all of the, his episode appearances on podcasts. I think AV Club did a good summary of all his uh, like best best of appearances. Um, so you can kind of Google that and check it out if you are interested because it is definitely worth it. One of the greats, taken too soon. Rest in peace, Harris. Um, actually, they started that Harris Fest. There's like um, a memorial on his birthday, which happens to be 420. Uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> so I think they started that uh, this year. So maybe go check that out too. Yeah. Um, and one thing I can recommend if you if you want to uh, know him quickly is the Aziz Ansari uh, memorial blog is really, really great. And there's lots of brilliant Harrisisms in there, Whittlesisms, as you said earlier, which is great, that aren't, aren't available in the podcast. That's so funny uh, in, in his podcast appearances that are just so absolutely worth reading. So, yeah, check that out. Yeah, I'm going to put a bunch of these links into the show notes. So just come to the show notes and you can get the links and watch all this Harris Whittle stuff because it will make you LOL. <laughs> So what should we do to uh, brighten the mood a little bit? <laughs> so to brighten the mood, I would like to talk about your Vines. The Vine app is unfortunately dead thanks to Twitter, I guess. They bought it and then they killed it. So it mm-hmm. was six-second videos. Some of the really <laughs> the funniest things I've seen are these six-second videos of like real stuff happening. But there are also people who just do like little comedy six-second videos. And I guess you would include yourself among those people, Mike? Um. I wanted to be one of those people, but I, I never really thought that I was um, very good at it. And nobody really watched them either. I did Vine before I was doing Twitter. And it's only through um, Twitter that any of them have got any views. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, the the Twitter audience does love a good Vine, right? They're all just looking for a quick laugh. Oh, yeah. It was, um, I think it was Sky. It was um, Space Girl Incognito that, um, that really... Uh, drew the attention to my vines because she retweeted a couple that she liked uh which is awesome of her yeah shout out to friend of the show sky sorry i didn't pick your tweet Uh, (laughs) i think it was already (laughs) read on the show uh, on a previous episode that's why i didn't read it that's the only reason (laughs) so um the as long as they know that they were on my list that's all i want (laughs) that's what i had to give that uh the apology list to (laughs) because he did he technically picked you but i just couldn't abide (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah the, yeah the vine is fun i have done a few but none not like in the style of like hilarious comedy um like yours are uh <laughs> mine are oh, sort of more I'll like you. real Come life on. or like slow slow mo video of a hummingbird <laughs> something like that um some asmr sounds of like nice hail falling on moss Ooh, Ooh. that sounds <laughs> like tactile like it, it was something I to see it was great. So did you get um, – you did a compilation, right? Because Vine died and they took all the Vines away, but you managed to save them? Yeah, they gave you a window to download and I um, am too disorganized to download them in that window. <laughs> and uh, I just thought they would be archived and be available on my page permanently so I wouldn't have to bother downloading them. I mean, of and course. Then, <laughs> and, then, uh, and, then, and then they weren't. My page was just down. All, it's been down ever since. Um so they've only archived really like the most popular miners from what I can tell. Or maybe there's just a, a, a bug with my page. But um, fortunately, I was able to, um, uh, my old phone, I was able to reboot it and then uh, get all of the originals off there. So it worked out okay in the end. But yeah. Oh, that's exactly. how you did it. You MacGyvered a situation where you went to your old phone. I thought you had yeah, I did. Like, I mean, wrote I, a I, letter to Vine and asked them to send them or something. <laughs> I, I, I did actually send them an email and say, I'm so sorry, I'm such an idiot, I've, I've missed the window, can I still get it? Um, and they sent me an email back about three months later saying, no. <laughs> so, <laughs> we eventually got around to uh, your email, but it turns out that we just turned the server off yesterday. <laughs> so, uh, hey, I'm sorry there. I'm sorry, Mork. 
Yeah, it was a yeah, and I'd already I'd already done it by that point as well. So I was like, you're like, oh, ah, forget um, you, Vine. But you didn't. Uh, did you get all of them or most of them? I got um, I got most of them. Some of the ones I didn't get weren't very good. So, <laughs> so for the better that they didn't make the compilation cut. Exactly. Yeah, there was there was quite a few that didn't make the compilation. Even of the ones I saved that didn't make the compilation cut. <laughs> okay. So I was hoping to put that link in the show notes so people could check out the compilation of all your vines because I don't know it's worth. How how long did it end up being? Um, I think it's like two minutes or two minutes twenty. Everybody's got two minutes. Just pause it right now and watch all the vines. Oh, thank you, Stephen. That's nice to meet you too. And um, welcome yeah, back. Oh, <laughs> those were hilarious yeah. vines. <laughs> I, was your uh, did you did you have a particular favorite or anything like that? So um, yeah, the, the, <laughs> the pressure on you. Now. It's like the when your girl. It was captioned when your girl in the mood. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah the um, the pile driver. Yeah. <laughs> So I put a tweet uh, in the show notes because I looked at the replies to that. And this um, girl, Jen, decided to reply to you and let you know that she says, I am literally crying hysterically because this is the funniest thing I have ever seen in my life. So that's, hey, that's a good note. It's a decent that's a decent note, right? Yeah, no, I'm, it's I'm, not bad. I, I, I'm often when I get at uh, when I get at replies, I'm like, uh oh, here we go. <laughs> but that's a good one. That is a good one, and I put it on the show notes for everyone to see. Give it a like, <laughs> and check out the Vine. Even though it is deceased on the link uh, that I provided, you should be able to see it in the compilation, I hope. Excellent. <laughs> awesome. So now, bum, 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 we get into the questions from Twitter. Thank you, everyone, so much who has submitted a question to the show and asked questions along the way, even for shows that have not aired yet. Uh, so thank you very much for asking all these questions. So let's dive right into it. Are you ready, Mike? Oh, yeah. So first question comes from great friend of the show, Timmy, at The Timmy Toes. You are familiar with uh, this individual, are you? Oh, yeah. Timmy's great. Uh, Everyone give him a follow. And he asks, what's better, flat shoelaces or round shoelaces? I'm going to answer. You can take a minute. (laughs) I've been thinking about this for a few days, and I've got to say, neither. The answer is very clearly Velcro. Oh, my gosh. Thinking outside the box. <laughs> didn't even answer. I don't think that's part of the question, though. I think he's asking out of these two, flat or round. Like, I don't oh. see Velcro mentioned in Timmy's question, so. I don't I'm, know. I'm making the assumption he's talking about uh, in the context <laughs> of doing up your sh- And I've got to say, Velcro, is, that shit is efficient and, and convenient. Um... um if I have to choose between the two, I'm going to say uh, round laces because because they remind me of the strawberry licor- licorice laces, whereas the flat laces remind me of tagliatelle, which I don't like. <laughs> so it's a pasta, it's a food based uh, decision, not uh, to do oh. with the fastening ability of the the rope. Not the, enough the sugar lace. in tagliatelle, in my opinion, despite being a complex carbohydrate. <laughs> <It's>, uh... <laughs> Literally nothing to do with the question, but there you go, Timmy. He prefers round, although he really prefers Velcro. <laughs> and strawberry licorice. <laughs> <laughs> strawberry licorice for what it's worth. A little bit of bonus information about that question. So thank you, Timmy. Uh, truly delightful. Now, next question is from another friend of the show, Bex. At Bex Dora, a fellow English person uh, from the UK. Have you ever mm. uh, have you ever met her in real life? Oh, that's a sore subject. We were supposed to meet up. This is the oh, cause no, of the this is the Tom project. thing. Uh oh, <laughs> poking a hornet's uh, nest. Okay, do tell. We uh, we arranged to meet up, and I cancelled to watch Phil Man's um, comedy set in London, stand up comedy set, um, and I cancelled a couple of days beforehand. Um, so no, we haven't met and it's my fault. I'm tutting at you, um, for canceling, uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you had to cancel. So that's unfortunate, but all these people went and saw Phil man do hilarious comedy and you were left out. So that is, uh, that's the teaser for the Tom. That's the, the start of it. Right. And then it's just blossoms oh, yeah. uh, <laughs> to a long standing feud. Yeah. It's a very healthy, um, very healthy relationship that we have with each other. <laughs> uh, sounds like it a stranger on the internet didn't come see him so he's mad <laughs> yeah well you know different things uh, upset different people in different ways okay so let's get to bex's yeah. question uh her question is who would win in a fight at trojan sauce or my mother i don't know bex's mother 
but I'm going to say Bex's mother. Oh, brown, 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 shots fired at Trojan Sauce. Tom will rebut it on a future episode. I just, uh, I couldn't, um, the, re- the, the reasoning behind my decision is I just could not resist the own. I had to, I just had to go for the own. I'm sorry, Tom. Yeah, I mean, it's bit. kind of like a, a huge setup, right? Like a underhanded slow pitch and you just had to, you had to knock it out. It's low hanging fruit. She she knew I was going to say Bex's mom. That's why she put the option up there. It's like those poles. With the, yeah, tut tut at Bex for setting him up in such a gruesome manner. Yeah. Well, she does have other questions, so let's get to these other questions. Bex asks, "What is your favorite thing to play on the banjo?" I guess it's you, a little song. I guess called, you play the banjo. Uh, I do play the banjo. That's yeah. a little foreknowledge uh, that Bex had that maybe the listeners didn't know. So it's not she's asking it randomly. You do play the banjo. I do. Yeah. And so the favorite I thing I'm the, sorry, I, is... Uh, yeah, my favorite thing to play on the banjo is the Banjo-Kazooie theme. Oh, the video game. Oh, yeah. That's why I bought a banjo. <laughs> okay. Uh, because All right, story's yeah, becoming a little bit clearer. <laughs> bought a banjo to play a video game theme. Yesterday, I, I, um, I had a, a random memory of uh, when Donkey Kong 64 came out, and I recorded the... Um, the rap at the beginning on um, my talk boy and I took the tape into school and I played it and I, I did the rap in front of oh, nice. my whole class. It wasn't for an event or anything. It was like a normal school day. <laughs> and I was like, I brought something in. I've teacher. prepared I something, something in. for the class. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, so can you still do the rap? Uh, no, I don't think so. Wait, I, no. <laughs> <laughs> I can remember bits of it. Like, oh, that's okay. Yeah, yeah. just do, give us a taste, like hum a, hum a bar. Kong's got style. So listen up, dudes. She can shrink in size to suit her mood. Take it to the fridge. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it's great. Nice. All right, well, everyone can uh, maybe Google that on YouTube <laughs> <laughs> if they want to hear the original. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. Not worth it. Definitely not. So not putting the link in the show notes. <laughs> Anyway, next next question, next question. Okay. I'm uh, sorry. I'm it, we're still in Bex Town. This is Bex is asking a lot of questions here. Some of them banjo related, actually 66% banjo related. So the final question she asks is, did you propose using the banjo? Um, no. Yeah, that was, a, <laughs> was simple. So d- how did you propose? I don't know if you know much about uh, London's skyscrapers, but uh, we um, we went to london and i took her up the shard and that is that does not mean what it sounds like it means yeah i i don't know if you cut out for a second the what the the shard it's called like a Um, glass like a piece of glass yeah not like yeah so yeah not the other thing yeah yeah um not like a shard uh but a shard um so it's like the tallest uh one in london um we yeah we were up on the viewing platform at the very top and then i dropped to my knee and Got out my ring, um, engagement <laughs> ring, not the other guy. <laughs> Got it's a lot it. of butt ball references. Yeah. Going on. yeah. Um, and yeah, she said yes. What's she the said yes. That's no the most involved. important part. No banjo involved. Yeah, I don't think you could probably get it in through security at the shard. I don't know what security's like, but. Um, yeah, I mean, I think the problem is when people see like violin cases or banjo cases, they kind of expect uh, you to like be carrying a Tommy gun inside. Yeah. So. Um, Desperado style. Exactly. Shout out to Antonio Banderas. Um, famous banjo. <laughs> famous banjo player, Antonio Banderas. Um, okay, well, that's great. That was a great little side tangent that we got on, but we got to keep these questions rolling. Question from David Hughes, popular Twitter user, Mom David Mom. Hughes. Um, so his question is, what's the most you've ever spent on a duvet? I don't say 200 quid because that's a fucking lie. 203 quid. You have not. That's, I am trying to do the calculation. That's like 500 plus Canadian dollars. Um, no, I have, I've never actually spent my own money on a duvet. I don't think. Oh no, I have probably like 30 pounds. (laughs) 30 quid. Yeah, that's, that's reasonable. I think my quid, mine's, uh, my duvet is more expensive than that. (laughs) She, so we have a shop, um, in England called Argos, which is like not very high range at all, kind of low range. Um, and I got all my bedding from that. <laughs> Cause it's yeah, like, just keep it simple. Oh yeah. 
All right. That, Sometimes you really are flipping into English every so often. It's great. I, I do. It. That David Hughes question got me into it. So from a friend of the show, Alligator at Not A Croc, he asks, uh, will Mike fly to Chicago to give me one-on-one dance lessons in multiple six-hour sessions? Very yeah, uh, specific question. I absolutely will. Um, just, uh, yeah, just get, just send me a ticket in the post and I will be on my way there. Do I have to come? My question back to um, Ali, maybe to answer on a future episode, <laughs> is whether I have to go uh, all the way over just for six hours and then come oh, back. Right. And then, you have to like live, or, live there for a while. Yeah. All right, exactly. well, we'll get your answer on a future episode. Be sure to tune in for that, listeners. <laughs> so, uh, Alligator, your answer is yes, of course. Caveat, you buy the ticket. Next question comes in from Ben at Van Gogh Bot. So he asks, what's the most you can bench press with your beard? Um, 2,000 kissograms. 2,000 kissograms? I don't even know the conversion on that. Um, it's uh, it's a metric, you know, kg. Uh, oh, got it. It's like, uh, yeah, got it. So two thousand. Yeah, that's that's good. That sounds uh, yeah. impressive. It's a, it's at least I think it's one and a half elephants, about approximately. <laughs> so, yeah, up there. Well, there you go, Ben. Uh, it, that is a lot. That is very impressive. Um, yeah, your beard is striking. Would you say it's one of the more striking parts of your appearance? <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a pretty plain face underneath, me, so um, I'm not, there's not much going on. Sp- uh, spicing uh, it my, up with the beard. I think my belly is probably one of the most striking. What, the most, the, the body part I do most of my striking with when people first see me. Um, but yeah, yeah, beard's up there, definitely. Beard is up there. Okay, we got to keep these rolling. From pal of the show, Rudy Mustang, he says... Do one of your famous impressions. Okay, uh, here is Arnold Schwarzenegger, and um, this is his famous famous line from The Terminator. <clears throat> I'm coming back. <laughs> nice. I can see why those are famous. Thank you very much. I can see why those are famous. Um, okay, so we keep it going. Uh, this can of worms is from Tom at Trojan Sauce. He might have been mentioned earlier in the show. We're getting to his questions right now, and he asks four questions. So I'm going to ask all the questions, try to just keep track of them, and then answer them in the order. Okay. Uh, One, I could beat you in a fight. So not really a question, more of a statement about the earlier thing. Two, what do you have to say about that? (laughs) Three, everyone calls you bitch bee behind your back. Also not a question. Four, pick one, American flag or Canadian flag. I don't know if that means the flags or the countries. Okay, um, so one, disagree. <laughs> Two, uh, bring it on, bitch. Okay. Uh, three, uh, yeah, who do you think uh, coined that awesome nickname? <laughs> and four, I'm going to say the Canadian flag because it has a cool leaf on it. Yay! I mean, no bias here, but great answers. Thank you so much. And Tom, very well. Tom, you'll be able to rebut those rebuttals on a future episode. I look forward to hearing that. You okay. Coward. So final, not you, Steve. <laughs> no, no, not I. Um, so finally, uh, close your ears for this one. Grandma. It's from friends of the sh- friend of the show, Todd Williams at V Todd Williams. And he asks, why do British people get to say cunt with impunity? I think the answer is, um, because we're all cunts and, uh, we all hate each other. Um, and we're all unpleasant to each other, so it kind of just it's it, we've been overexposed to it. I think that's why. I think a little bit of the is the uh, lackadaisical. You're just like it's just a regular word now because we use it so much. But for mm. uh, for us North Americans, oh, that's that's incredibly taboo. It's a bad word. It's but, a I mean, bad word. Words are just noises that you make with your mouth. At the end of the day, um, is it? <laughs> Uh, welcome to uh, Word Class with Mike Bigby. Uh, let's talk about how we make words. All right. What's the first Making word? <laughs> it's the C word. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so there you go, Todd. You know, it's just an English thing. Just leave it. They're not bothering you. They're just saying it to each other pretty much. Uh, so just let them have it. I agree. Yeah, I agree. agree with that. 
Okay, so that thank you everyone so much for submitting questions. We are now rounding down to the final segment of the podcast. And um, we are on a podcast. Uh, this is a podcast. You've been on other podcasts before, but you think that there might be too many podcasts. Um, I feel like it's a running joke that there's a lot of podcasts, um, but I don't think that's a bad thing. People seem to think that it's a bad thing, um, but obviously it just means more choice. You know, there's more good stuff out there. Um, but let's, yeah, let's 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 listen to some podcasts. So yeah, so there's these. So you've given me like a list of these podcasts that you're like check these podcasts out they are worth it worth the listen to right yeah so uh let's get into it the first podcast that you sent me um and i see why it is called big b's podcast and it says here it's like a podcast about mike big b's bod uh devoted to mm-hmm. discussing it each week that's what it's it is. It's a great one. It's a great one. Should we, uh, should we play it? Yeah, let's play a clip. We'll insert the clip here. Okay. Big Beast Podcast. Hey, welcome to Big Beast Podcast, the only podcast that talks about Mike Big Beast Bod. Welcome. I am here with my co host, uh, as always. Uh, say hello, Jeff. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. Jeff, hi, uh, Jeff, you're here. Uh, we're here. We're ready to do it. We're getting into it this week. So first of all, let's talk about last week's episode. We talk about uh, Mike Bigby's uh, eyelashes. It was one of our hottest episodes. Uh, we got a lot of comments, a lot of a lot of interaction online uh, about the uh, eyelash episode. Um, Jeff, uh, what do you think about that? Well, I, I, I'm standing with what I said last week, uh, which is the you know, three in from the left is clearly the superior eyelash uh, of the whole set. Um, but, you know, uh, clearly you're a stubborn asshole. <laughs> my Listen, a lot of people sent us in their thoughts and uh, they frankly disagree with you. You know, they're saying, you know, maybe uh, maybe the second in is uh, is the nicest one, you know, uh, and I don't disagree with that, you know. Well, I think those people are, uh, are, are Philistines, basically. All right. Well, that's enough about last week's episode. Um, but we should say we got a lot of great episodes coming up. Uh, we got uh, his hairstyle coming up in a few weeks. Um, oh, the ankles episode is going to be great. The ears episode is going to be off the chain. Uh, and, of course, the two-part season finale which hole is are we looking at? <laughs> there we go. So I hope everyone keeps listening to Mike Bigby's podcast. But this week, we are talking about his butt. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice butt. Maybe it's a nice butt. I'm looking at a picture right now. I'll put it up in the show notes. <laughs> so uh, it's uh, so it's you know it's got all the right moves in all the right places. It's pre- it's pretty big though, don't you say? It's it's a it's a good size. Uh Jeff, now you've seen this uh you've seen this thing shaking about uh in in uh, videos, right? These little videos he does? Um yeah, I have and uh one of my favorite things about his entire online presence is it's almost solely dedicated to the size of his ass. It's a lot of butt stuff. That's for sure. A lot yeah. of butt stuff. So <laughs> that is uh that's it so we keep the podcast nice and short send us your thoughts send us your questions and your comments uh, about mike bigby and his butt and uh we'll talk about it on the next show so uh i guess we just play the little outro theme and we out of here Oh, well, that was the clip from Big B's podcast. Thank you for sending that in, uh, Mike. Actually, that seemed like it was the whole show. <laughs> yeah, uh, and also that guy, Jeff, uh, his accent was all over the place. <laughs> yeah, that uh, Jeff's a real weird guy. I've listened to a lot of episodes, uh, and uh, he doesn't get better. Yeah, he really floats in and out of accents. That, uh, the host, though. <laughs> great. The host is great. The host. The host is really great. Incredibly yeah. handsome, too. A, lo- a lot of laughing going on for, for seemingly no reason. <laughs> <laughs> well, pretty good. Uh, so obviously, I know why you like that one because it's uh, literally about you. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, as everybody who follows me on Twitter knows, I am a big fan of me. So yeah, it's one of my all-time faves. All right. Well, okay. 
So uh, let's get into one uh, the next podcast that you have submitted. Uh, what one is that? It's, it's Filling Fine, which is uh, uh, a recording of um, of two guys who are really just basically one is a really really big fan of Phil Collins, and the other one is not at all. <laughs> right. So should we get into it? Yeah. Uh, play the clip. Baby's good to me, and I feel fine. As we were saying last week, uh, Daniel, I'm so fucking bad at it. What was you saying last week, Daniel? I don't think that you can take face value at face value. Um, it, of course, it's got the classic song in the air tonight, but it also does have uh, Tomorrow Never Knows as the, the, the climactic ending. Uh, um, and I think that's kind of special because we couldn't find a Phil Collins song that was appropriate for the theme tune to this podcast. So we chose I Feel Fine by the Beatles. That's quite interesting, that. I'm really in a nosedive here. Things are spiraling out of control in the Phil Collins Studio podcast. Uh, The Stu Stu Studio. We're in the Stu Stu Studio. We're here talking face value. What else is there? In the air tonight, the drum solo alone is worth the purchase price. That, um, would you agree? I, yeah, I, I, I mean, I feel like it's it's not even done by a human. There. That's that's one of my major issues with that. It's like a it's like a drum machine. What you think it's what? <laughs> it's a drum machine, and I know that's surprising uh, to you, a big fan of Phil Collins. Um, but no, you know, I, he, I he refuse. was a drum. He could have put it on the drum. No, I refuse to believe that. Wow, that was a weird clip, guys. That was a real weird clip of this Phil Collins podcast. What do you like about that podcast, Mike? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so bad at this. I'm so bad at listening to these real podcasts. Yeah. <laughs> we could have picked a better clip, but we chose to go with that one uh, instead. So, you know, it really gives a great uh, view into Phil Collins and uh, what his life was really like. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I yeah. Um, so, uh, what, 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 what do you want to do now, Steve? Um, well, I think we are just about ready to wrap up. So, I wanted to thank you very much for joining us this week and having a fun time. You were the first guest that we tried to have a little fun with at the end there. <laughs> tried to do a little bit of a bit <laughs> and see what happened. So, we were just, that was 100% just yeah. riffing it out, right? Jesus Christ. I should say, as a complete aside, um, to those real podcasts. This is a complete, completely, uh, complete non sector, nothing to do with anything else. I have never done improv before. In my life. Well, <laughs> you could have fooled me, Mike. I don't know. Your accent work was spot on. You were yes anding everything. <laughs> uh, the timing was great. We are on a little bit of a delay uh, with the, we're in different time zones, you know? Mm, yeah. And it, I mean, accents, I don't know if they were that great. No, and my I like the problem with my British accent is that it moves around dialect wise. It goes from like a Cockney guy in the streets of London to like a posh guy up in the top of the Shard Tower conducting Incredible. business, and it's, it just doesn't have any consistency. But I'll work on it, uh, and then for the Tom episode, you better believe it's going to be popping off. Oh yeah. I want to. I want to hear that. I want to hear what that. Oh, I bet you say. will listen to. There will be discussion about you. I de- no, don't doubt it. <laughs> um, and to the listeners, I'm very sorry about the terrible improv. Sorry about the terrible <laughs> improv, but you know it's growing pains. We're just trying to have fun on the podcast, seeing what we can do with different folks. And you said your uh, strong point was improv, so we developed this bit around your strength in improv. But clearly, that was a lie. I did not say that I was strong in improv, but I will accept that I, it was my idea. <laughs> yeah, that's. A, I just maybe inferred that from your idea uh, to do podcast bits. But I thought I had I had fun. Uh, time doing it, and I really appreciate you coming on and sticking your neck out, as it were. Uh, uh, <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Thanks very much. And really playing music, like the little podcast songs are great, even though you broke a string. A little behind-the-scenes information for the listeners. You broke a string, still came through, played little podcast ditties um, on those clips that were totally real. Uh, so now we're at the end of the podcast. Uh, thanks again, Mike Bigby, for joining us. Uh, did you have anyone you wanted to shout out? Any final things to plug or anything like that? Um, yeah, I'd just like to say follow Friday at Mike Bigby, the nicest guy I've ever met. There you go. Great plug. 
Mike Bigby online. Check him out. So Thanks, um, I think that uh, if you send a song, we will add it on at the end. So everyone stay tuned for maybe a Mike Bigby song at the end. That'd be great. Yeah, cool. Can I, can I say the title now? Yes, please do. This is uh, I'm Sexy and I Know It by LMFAO. LMFAO. All right. Thanks, Mike. And I guess we'll get out of here by playing the little song. Oh, yeah. So say bye to all your family and friends, everyone listening. Yeah, bye. Yeah, bye. Sorry. Bye. Thanks for doing it. And we'll see you next time. Please listen <laughs> to the podcast. Love you, everyone. Bye.